nanohub.org. You can follow along with this presentation using printed slides from the NanoHub. Visit www.nanohub.org and download the PDF file containing the slides for this presentation. Print them out and turn each page when you hear the following sound. Enjoy the show. So in this segment, I would like to talk about transmission through two barriers in the Open 1D Systems section. And this looks in terms of a systems approach again. Right now you have uh, four segments where you would have to do wave function matching. And so if you do a transmission uh, transfer matrix approach, this is how you would drive it, write it down. In the left you have incident and reflected, and you are trying to find out what the transmitted is, and you assume that there's nothing coming from the right, and there's no particles lost. So again, this is analytically solvable for flat potentials. And uh, just as a reminder, I wanted to show you the slide from the previous lecture one more time. Here's a single barrier and the transmission through a single barrier, and there was an exponentially growing component of this uh, transmission under the barrier height, and then there was this uh, sort of quasi-bound state that was sitting above the barrier. So transmission is finite under the barrier, there's tunneling, there is, uh, the, the transmission above is not perfectly unit, and the uh, uh, transmission goes to one only for certain energies. Now let's look at this in a double barrier case. So the double barrier should be pretty much like the single barrier, right? So you put two, two barriers behind each other, the exponential decay that you had here should just add up, right? right? I mean, it's like s two series resistors, right? If you put two series resistors behind each other, the resistance doubles, right? So if you have an exponential decay through one barrier, you should just have more decay if you had to go through two barriers. And we found that if you make a single barrier fatter and fatter, there is an exponential decay, right? So if you put two behind each other, you should exponentially uh, decay further. Well, it turns out not so. Right? So what you have is two barriers in series separated by a well and you have a strong transmission, transmission of one under the barrier height. That's kind of bizarre, right? I mean, it's, you're expecting exponential decay, but you have perfect transmission for a single resonance. And the key word is resonance. You have a resonance that is sitting in here that is coupled to the reservoir on the left and the right, and it's letting electrons through. And the transmission coefficient has, shows this characteristic dip here, right? And again, you cannot predict this with classical physics, right? In terms of classical particles. Now if you said classical physics in terms of waves, you can do that. The optical equivalent of this is a Fabry-Perot cavity, an optical cavity with two mirrors. Right? Two semi-transparent mirrors, and you can, it will let light through. That's how a laser cavity works, right? So nothing special about this in terms of quantum mechanics. It's wave mechanics. But wave mechanics at a level at nanometers that we can control experimentally. All right. So now let's look at an energy that's a little bit higher so we again see the ground state here, and we see an excited state above the barrier, and we see the, trend, the reflection dipping and the transmission going up to one. So again, we're in the same realm where, well, a classical particle, we would shoot above the barrier, that should transmit perfectly, and nothing should come out underneath, right? And again, we have a modulation above the barrier. And the other thing that's interesting is you can see that this resonance here has a certain width, right? It's like a bandpass filter, so to speak, in electrical engineering terms. And this has a different width over here, right? Has a different bandpass filter width. Okay. 
Okay, so my statement here is that how strongly a, a state can be seen is, uh, uh, is, is evidenced by the width of this transmission peak. So if it's very broad, it's actually relatively weakly bound. So we'll drive this home a little bit further. What we'll do is we'll modulate the barrier height. So this is again done in this uh, tool called PCPBT on the NanoHub, Piecewise Constant Potential Barrier Lab, where we compare the uh, short barrier case in deep solid lines, and we made the barrier taller, we get another transmission coefficient like this. So what we notice is if we make the barrier taller, this resonance seems to be a little bit sharper. Okay? And it moves up in energy a little bit. So making the barriers taller corresponds to, in a sense to, if you think of an oscillator or a cavity Q of your, uh, your Faber-Perot filter, it makes it of a higher quality. So you're, now we go back to the particle view, right? As your particle is bouncing in that box, the harder the wall is, the longer it's going to stay in that box. Okay? And that is associated with the line width. How sharp is that line? How well, def or in quantum mechanical terms again, how well is that energy defined that that electron has, okay? Because energy and time are complementary variables, right? So it's sort of like a residence time. If you converted this energy into time, where you, you go from E equal H bar L, uh, nu, if you converted that energy into time, it gives you a residence time. Or it could give you the tunneling time would take to hop in and out. Okay, so all these are time scales, hopping rates, resonance line widths that are all evidenced here in the single transmission curve. Okay, so these concepts are all connected. 